Tom here, how's everybody doing today? So, finally. Um, I have had tons of requests for this and I'm finally getting around to it. I just had a lot of very interesting fragrances that I wanted to uh, review. So after the initial um, <clears throat> unboxing video on this one where I gave my first impressions, I meant to um, come back and revisit it uh, and give an in-depth review and I just um, kept getting pushed to the back burner. So, Christian Dior uh, Bois d'Argent. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable fragrance. Let me say from the outset that the definitive review on this, if you want to watch a spectacular review um, on Bois d'Argent, it's Dan's. It is just unbelievable. And I actually put a link to that in my unboxing video on it. So, since I did the unboxing of the fragrance um, a couple months back, the popularity and buzz around it has increased to the point where um, there are tons of splits on it now, which is actually a good thing because it's a difficult fragrance to obtain and a difficult one to sample, as is the entire Collection Privé. I also want to say that I'm not trying to hype anything. Um, I've had like I said, tons of requests from subscribers to go in depth regarding the notes on this fragrance, what I find it comparable to in terms of other fragrances, which from the previous line I like the best. So I'm getting lots and lots of questions for a full in depth review of it. Now that we're seeing um, more talk and more buzz about it, more curiosity about what the fragrance is actually like, I thought it was well past time. Uh, so this was one of the two that I, I wanted to get back and revisit and do full reviews on after the initial impression. Uh, the other one is Opulent Blue 77 Opulent Shake. Um, and I'm going to do that one, a full review, uh, coming up here shortly just because I've had tons of requests for that also. Um, I'm not trying to hype this fragrance, so don't see this as hype. See this as my own personal opinion on a fragrance I love. Whether or not you love it or decide to buy it is completely subjective. Fragrance is completely objective. It is totally up to you. Um, I will say from the outset that I had a couple people blind buy both um, Bois d'Argent as well as Leather Oud and were unhappy with them once they got them. So I would say definitely get it on a split unless you're the type of person that enjoys the thrill of the blind buy. That's me. Um, I kind of like that anticipation of, of purchasing and then waiting for it to arrive in the mail, wondering whether or not what I think it's going to smell like based on the note breakdown is what it actually smells like and whether or not I'm going to like it. Usually uh, from the note breakdown I can kind of get a mental image and it's usually not accurate, but I'm close enough um, that the ones that I do pick to blind buy I almost always enjoy, thankfully. But if you're not that type of person, um, to take that chance, definitely sample before you buy. Um, so I, again, not a hype video, um, but this is, in my opinion, this line is a masterpiece. So here we go, uh, in depth. So if you're not a detail-oriented person, you're going to want to skip this, this review. If you're not a research-oriented person, you're going to want to skip this because I'm going to go in-depth into the notes and, and break down on this one. It's not going to be a gloss over. Um, Christian Dior, Bois d'Argent. So first, the presentation, again, totally subjective, just what I think. Um, <clears throat> but the exterior packaging is just this white um, cylindrical tube. Let me adjust my light a little bit so you can see without the glare. So it's like a uh, heavy constructed pasteboard um, <clears throat> tube. Excuse me, I'm just gonna pull that down a little bit. Um, and then opens up. 
and it's padded on the inside so this is fairly stable and it's a heavy um, cushion cylinder um, great for travel it isn't going anywhere um, it's just held very securely in this awesome um, simplistic tube simple elegant simplistic love the typeface um, love the tube idea high quality padding on the inside it almost feels like a um, feltish kind of stuff right there and then the actual bottle and to me this is take your breath away gorgeous simple and elegant um, it's just incredible huge uh, glass bottle you can see the size of what I'm dealing with here um, this one is the 8.5 uh, fluid ounce or 250 ml uh, this is the big boy bottle um, it also comes in a 4.25 um, half the size 125 ml uh, the 250 ml runs around $230, the uh, 125 around 155 And if you think about the amount of juice you're getting compared to um, other higher end fragrances, I think that uh, it's a pretty good deal, actually, because you've got this big Mambo honking bottle. Um, <clears throat> the polarized magnets, Dan talks about this in his review, um, so the cap will not budge. But all you have to do is, which is kind of a neat idea, turn it because the magnets are polarized and it pops right off. Then put it back on and it flips into place and is secure again. The top um, has the Dior signature ribbing uh, with the CD at the top. So again, this one is the bigger size, the 8.5 ounce. This is not... Um, an eau de cologne, it is not um, an eau de toilette. It was labeled that originally because there were three fragrances that were originally re uh, um, introduced, all marketed toward men, under the collection Couturier. And because they were marketed toward men, um, the fragrances got labeled as eau de cologne slash eau de toilette. They are not. They are eau de parfum concentration. So that's a very big misconception. And if you look actually on the bottom, and I doubt very much um, that I can show you this on uh, camera, maybe. But eau de parfum natural spray right at the bottom. And it is, um, to me, wears as eau de parfum strength. So the lacquer cap, um, the elegant, simplistic bottle, the clean lines, um, the kind of cool typeface on the bottle is reminiscent of um, another fragrance house to me and I'm sure uh, to you guys also, um, where they wanted to have a bottle that was ethereal and almost transparent um, and a tight face that was clean um, and elegant so as to showcase what was actually in the bottle and that is of course Chanel and I don't know if anyone has noticed the comparison between the two um, but again clean elegant simplistic um, the simple typeface, and it just makes sets off the on the black detailing. It just sets off the fragrance. It just reeks to me of class, as does this one, um, and even more so with Chanel with some of their larger um, eau de toilettes. Um, I think that there's a ton of similarity uh, between these two. So. So talking about the hype thing after Dan's amazing video, I blind bought that huge honkin' bottle and um, so happy when um, a blind buy turns out amazing and it did and I've worn it and studied it 
and loved it ever since. Um, so I have um, a lot more, I think, of a detailed perception of what the fragrance is now, how it develops, how it wears on your skin, because I love that one so much. Uh, I went ahead and bought some others. So <clears throat> I have the Bois d'Argent, and I have the Leather Oud by them, and I've got the Vetiver also. Oh, I hate this camera. By them. Um, <clears throat> all of them stunning. This one I love. It's great. Uh, for summer, I did uh, do the full review on the Leather Oud earlier. I have not yet done. Um, the review on Vetiver, so that one coming up soon. I just need more hours in the day, guys. And then I have the mini, mini, mini of Granville, which was uh, paying homage to one of Christian Dior's homes. Um, and it is actually a pine based fragrance, and pine is very difficult, very tricky to use, I'm sure, as you know, um, in perfumery and this one again is masterful so haven't uh, met one of the Collection Privé that I have not liked. So originally introduced in 2004 the designer at the time was the head of the house of Dior Hedy Sleman um, and the cap actually pays homage to um, Hedy Sleman. Uh, it's supposed to be reminiscent the ribs and the cap of his tuxedo jackets that he designed. He was later given the boot by the House of Dior, they say, because it was due to his pencil thin cuts on some of his clothing and people were unable to fit into the clothing. So um, that's one of the stories as to why he left. Uh, Perfumier was a Nick um, Minardo on this one. Um, it was, like I said, introduced in 2004 as a trio of men's fragrances, uh, the other two being Eau Noir and Cologne Blanche. Um, then later on, uh, those three um, were integrated into and became part of La Collection Privé, um, and now there are numerous more um, fragrances in the collection. It's actually characterized as a woody chiffre. Um, the main three players in this fragrance, supposedly at the top, um, are white incense from Yemen. And then in the mid, um, iris florentine. And then at the base, uh, white musk. Um, I think that's an oversimplification, um, actually, of the fragrance. Um, much more that I pick up on and there are other notes in the fragrance. <clears throat> okay, I had to get a coffee and roll up my sleeves here because I'm going to be spraying some other <clears throat> fragrances for the portion where a subscriber asked me um, if there are other fragrances that I could compare this to. Um, so I'm going to be spraying um, myself quite a bit here because like I've said before I have to actually smell something on skin before I can describe it. but. Um, the other players and the other notes in um, Bois d'Argent, uh, which means, by the way, Silver Woods, um, are incense, um, Iris Absolute, um, Myrrh, uh, Honey, Musk, Wood, and Leather Notes. Um, it, when I try to, do, to compare it to something else, I have a problem because there's nothing else in my mind like it. Um, there are other um, fragrances with notes that are comparable, um, but they do not smell like this. I can pick out specific notes in this fragrance that I can find in others, so that's what I'm going to allude to here a little bit. Um, when I smell this, uh, the visual image that I get, and I'm not sure why, is uh, azure blue sky filled with puffy white clouds. Like in the perfect world, this is how clouds should smell. And I can't describe um, what it is. Um, 
right off the bat you get the the light incense notes and the, it's not <clears throat> one of the heavy heavier incenses um, like you would find in an amouage fragrance this is a light white inc <coughs> incense excuse me um, and that's followed with that iris I am a huge iris fan um, and they allude to there being the, the lipstick note in iris and I find a little bit of that in this in that it has that um, smell of not feminine but of what an expensive skincare product almost would smell like the lipstick note that they talk about yeah I could see that um, I'm a huge fan of iris in all its forms it can come off many different ways it, iris can come off floral it can come off buttery and rich uh, the orris root um, can sometimes come off as a bit dry uh, but in this context I find it to be the butter, buttery rich um, beautiful like iris butter note um, there's some honey in this but it's almost mixed with like a hay musky hay accord and then once it dries down you get um, not a deep uh, rich leather like uh, you would find in like Tuscan leather um, but there's a creamy leather um, and a light wood mix to it <clears throat> um, it's, it's not comparable to anything um, that I have and the thing that's interesting about it is that it's ever-changing there's a powderiness to it but by that I'm not talking Johnson's baby powder powdery or old lady powder it's an it adds to that puffy um, kind of feeling that you get the cloud like feeling the ethereal hazy wispy kind of deal um, completely unisex when I spray it though I think of a guy in a suit um, sophisticated well-groomed um, understated it reminds me of old money and I don't mean like old person that has money I mean like your own private jet money <laughs> it's what I think of it's somebody that's not trying to toot their own horn um, but enjoys the way they smell um, the sillage and projection on it are good but it's not in any way offensive um, it's a skin scent and a, a scent for those that are standing near you um, it lasts I would say I get seven or eight hours from it um, but it's light enough where it's it could seasonality it could be any time of, of the year I wouldn't say it's a romantic or seductive scent at all it's more of one of those wispy ethereal um, floaty dreamy kind of, of fragrances so now let's get into some comparisons okay so when I first spray it what I get is a very subtle um, super soft subtle incense um, and that this is hard to describe <clears throat> because when you think incense you think the black burning sticks and it's usually heavy this is a very soft very gently smoky white frankincense type incense is what I would say and then off the top I get like a honeyed hay-like um, creaminess uh, with a little vanilla so in some ways um, a little bit of the hay uh, from Shergi is what I get uh, from the top not nearly um, the in-your-face uh, strength and sweetness though that you get from Shergi. The hay note is there um, with Bois. So that right off the top um, and then just a touch of honey and the honey note um, Killian uh, back to black nothing like um, the sweetness though in this one this one is a super sweet rich 
honey, uh, tobacco type fragrance. And to me, um, the bois is a very light honey sweetness. But I do pick up the similarities on the honey note between the two. Um, and then it gently moves into um, a creamy uh, kind of a vanilla accord and a leather. But the leather is just barely there again. So comparison would be uh, Kebeluga uh, by Guerlain and the Guerlainite leather um, type of vanilla that they're famous for. But again, this one is much sweeter. Um, but it's that illusion of a white creamy leather uh, that I find similar um, between the Bois and uh, the Kibaluga. It's just a creamier, um, almost not their leather note. It's like white leather gloves or leather upholstery in, in a car, not like the dark biker jacket type of leather that's really Tuscan leather in your face. Um, it's a wispy uh, type of creamy leather. And then finally, my favorite part of the fragrance and is, is the iris butter um, orris note in Bois. And the closest that I have come and the ones that do the best work uh, with iris, in my opinion, is the Zerjoff line. This one is Modoc. And the comparison here, um, is in the iris note. Again, it's that buttery, it's not floral, it's that um, buttery melt into your skin um, orris. I'm just printing it on my computer paper here, but. And the other thing that these two share um, in, in common is that this also gives off that hazy, um, kind of wispy impression what I've said in my review on Modoc uh, before is that I think of um, a whole library full of first edition books. There's something that's kind of um, dusty and papery uh, in Modoc, and which I think the iris um, note gives to this fragrance, and it also gives um, to to Bois uh, in Bois de Jean that. Um, kind of hazy, papery feeling is there, uh, combined with the honey and the musk. Um, it's just an ethereal, um, puffy, mellow, creamy, um, melt into your skin type fragrance. That's why I think it's a masterpiece, because it, it so expertly combines all of the notes from these fragrances uh, that we've talked about. And when you think about all the different things going on with all, with Shergi and, and Back to Black and uh, Kirbaluga and Modoc, um, it would sound like it would be a mess with those different parts in this. And what's stunning is that those fragrances are all um, a bit more heavy uh, and in your face, I think, than this one is. It pulls together myrrh and musk and leather and um, incense and iris, which can all be pretty in your face and strong, and yet it, it tends to be um, sublime and ethereal and um, elegant and like I said, kind of wispy, puffy, um, dreamy. Like I said, very unisex. I see it more personally for a man than for a woman. Um, and I know that's the way it was created originally. A woman could definitely wear it, either or. Um, it's just a stunning, uh, stunning, wonderful fragrance. Nothing about this is in your face, um, so it, there's a sweetness to it without being too sweet. There's a leather accord to it without it being too leathery. There's that honey note and the hay note without it being the deep, 
um, super sweet honey of um, the Killian, or um, the rich hay note uh, that the Shorgi has. Um, you have to try it, and I struggle with describing it because it is so unique and so different. But like I said, definitely uh, do not buy blind buy. I don't want to see that to happen to someone again. Um, and this uh, again is just my own impression of the of the fragrance I'm trying to hype. Um, but it's I would say if I were to choose um, two, it would probably be. As the top in Michael, the ones that I couldn't do without it would probably be right now, uh, the Jubilation uh, 25 and this one is the ones that I love the most. So, that is my full in-depth review on uh, Bois de Ajon. So you guys can stop asking me now, because <laughs> it's done. Um, so, like I said, the Opulent Shake is coming up soon. Talk to you later, guys. Have a good day.